Hi, my name is Jake and I'm a motion designer from Ukraine. And now we will make this effect. This is the easiest tutorial on my channel so far. Even beginners will be able to get the same effect. Best part that you are getting this pre-made flamethrower for free. And if you've purchased my VFX bundle, you can download already updated bundle to get this flamethrower for free. Also, now is the best time to purchase my VFX bundle on VideoHive, just for $11 until March 15. VideoHive is marketplace for professional high-quality templates. Starting March 8, they have huge 40% discount on lots of great templates. My VFX bundle is also part of this huge sale. Follow the links in description to get my VFX bundle just for $11. And also, there is a link in description to landing page of all great projects on sale with 40% discount. Discount week continues only till March 15. So now is the best time to get VFX bundle with all pre-made effects, including this flamethrower and all future updates for only $11. Let's get started. Today will be drag and drop kind of tutorial. It's perfect for beginners, so I'm using Adobe After Effects CC 2015. This footage will be in description below. You can download it for free, except this flamethrower. This one will be in VFX bundle. It's super easy to use, just drop your footage on this icon to create new composition. Then drag and drop this flamethrower. You can go to transform, flip horizontal and just position wherever you want. Just like this. As you can see, it's super easy to use. This flamethrower I've created using 3ds Max and plugin called Phoenix FD. Let's delete it. And this one I've created using 3ds Max and plugin called Fume FX. We have two separate videos, one for fire and other one for smoke. It has alpha channel. So this one you can download it for free in the description below. As also this footage which we are going to use for this tutorial. So we've created new composition with our footage. And now let's throw some fire. Just download from description below. And some smoke. As you can see fire has a black background. So let's add mode to add. Here. If you can see modes, just click on this toggle switch. Then select these both layers. Press shift on keyboard to select both. And place it right along your hand. And select this smoke layer. Then select this rectangle tool. And let's cut off this smoke part here. Then click on this selection tool. And let's adjust our mask. So our goal is to cut off a smoke right around my hand here. Then press F on keyboard. And let's set mask feather to about 100. And maybe let's set transfer mode to screen. Let's close this tab here. Then select these both layers. And let's find the moment when I'm starting to shoot fire. This is perfect. Let's move our fire footage. And adjust position like this. Now look here. And you can see that fire movement does not match my hand movement. So let's fix this. Parent our smoke layer to the fire layer. By clicking on this pick whip and set it to fire. Select this fire layer. Click on pen behind tool here. And move this anchor point to our hand. So now we are able to scale our footage up from this point so smoke could cover all of our screen. Press S on keyboard. So 118 is perfect for me. You can scale as much as you need. Let's close this tab here. And now let's match our movement of our hand with the fire. We need to select our footage. Right mouse click on it. And go to time. Enable time remapping. Let's click on our selection tool here. And now let's count our fire movement. Let's solo our fire layer by clicking here and start counting. As you can see, it goes left and right, left and right. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, and six. 
Here we can cut our footage. And now let's create keyframes when my hand also moving to the left and to the right. One. My hand is reaching to the right at highest peak. So let's create a keyframe. Then scroll through. And watch my hand. So here is highest peak of this movement. Create a keyframe. Then scroll through. Here is another point when I stop moving my hand. So as you can see, I've created keyframes where my hand is changing direction. So at this point, then at this point, and here. Now let's match our keyframes to our fire movement. Let's also create keyframe about here, just to save this start motion. And now we are going to speed up or slow down our footage. So it looks like this is peak of our fire movement. Let's move this keyframe here. As you can see, our fire went to the left. Move our keyframe, then to the right, about here. Let's move our keyframe, then again to the left. And again to the right, like here. And last moving here. So now we've matched our fire with movement of my hand. Now we need to change a bit our position of the fire to match it better. So let's unparent this smoke layer by clicking here and set it to none. Then select our fire and press P on keyboard. Let's set first keyframe and move it closer to our hand. Then skip few frames and adjust it. Then again skip few frames and adjust it. Just make sure that you are not creating too many keyframes. Try to have bigger gaps between keyframes. And just continue to match the movement of our hand. Now let's preview this. As you can see now it looks much better. And you can spend more time if you want to make it as perfect as you want. Let's close this tab here. And here. Also let's right mouse click here. And click on trim comp to work area. As you know, we have a lot of smoke here. So let's try to bring back this into our frame. You can select our footage and go to effect and presets and type here motion tile. Select it and drag and drop on your footage. Now let's select these both layers and parent them to our footage. And now we can select our footage and move it to the right like this. So we can see a lot more of the smoke in our frame. Now let's fix this issue by changing this output width to 150 and click on this mirror edges. As you can see it mirrors our footage. So in some cases it would not work, it can be too visible. Now we can also add some curves, drag on our footage and let's animate it. About here let's create a keyframe and here where we see our fire let's make this shape. We are trying to simulate what would do auto exposure on your camera. Basically it would try to focus on this bright light. You can also create new layer, go to layer, new, solid. And create some orange solid, click OK. Select ellipse tool here, just click and hold. And select ellipse tool, then set our orange layer above, like this. And create some mask, something like this. Then press F on keyboard. And set feather to about 400. And set it to add. Then press T on keyboard to adjust our intensity and set it to value which you find the best. 55 looks good. Let's also animate it. Here set a keyframe and here set it to zero. Let's cut also our layer and move it a bit like this. Close it here. And now let's preview this. So basically this is how you can use this footage right now. Just download it from description. You can also support my channel by purchasing my VFX bundle. It is constantly updated with new effects, such as this flamethrower as well. It's better to purchase now because this week we are having discount. This week it will cost only $11. So purchase now and you'll have these new updates for free. Also, if you want to create this kind of flamethrower by yourself, you'll need 3ds Max and also a plugin called FumeFX. And in the description below I've linked this tutorial on how to create this kind of flamethrower. So don't forget to have 3ds Max 
as also fume effects or just download this footage which I already made for you. Make sure to subscribe to see more. Thanks for watching guys, see you next time.